Number 1 simile A simile is a phrase that makes a comparison between two different things and shows a common quality between them. It uses the words of comparison which include like as 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 so as etc. Here you need to pay special attention that the things being compared should be different. For example, she looks like you. It's not a simile. If the things are same that would be another poetic device which is called comparison. One of the most perfect example of simile is a brother is as tall as a giraffe. Here basically the boy is not being compared with the giraffe but the height of the boy is being compared with the height of a giraffe. I hope I'm clear. Some other examples include as cute as a kitten, as funny as a monkey, as light as a feather, as bold as ice, as innocent as a lamb. Number 2 metaphor. It's an advanced form of simile. Because simile makes a comparison, but metaphor makes a declaration. It says that one thing is another. It does not say that he is as brave as a lion. It declares that he is a lion. So, metaphor is a figure of speech in which something is spoken as being something else, even though it is not that something else. Words of comparison are not used in it. Example: Your brain is a computer. One more example includes. If your parents are scolding you by saying owl or monkey or so on trust me they are giving you the most perfect examples of metaphor Number 3 personification Personification basically means assigning human qualities to non-humans They may be abstract ideas non-living things and animals also So let's frame a definition Personification is a literary device that gives human like characteristics to non-human entities Usually there remains a confusion that animals are already living beings so can their walking and talking be said to be the personification the answer is yes let's dive deeper when animals are given human qualities it is basically called the anthropomorphism but anthropomorphism is also a part of personification so it can rightly be called personification a few more examples of personification are lightning danced across the sky My alarm clock shouts at me to get out of the bed every morning. The moon played hide and seek with the clouds. She did not realize the opportunity was knocking at her door. The popcorn leapt out of the bowl. Our next two figure of speech is paradox and oxymoron are closely similar. But let's try to differentiate them. Number 4, oxymoron. It is basically the combination of two Greek words oxy means sharp moron means dull when something is sharply dull it is oxymoron so finally an oxymoron is a figure of speech containing words that seem to contradict each other for example living death seriously funny original copies small crowd exact estimate let's see a few sentences as well a few more examples include This is another fine mess you have got us into. The work was seriously funny. You are clearly confused man. Her singing was enough to raise a living death. The trip is really a working holiday. Number 5 paradox. The word paradox comes from a Greek word paradoxon which means contrary to expectations and existing belief. There's only a little similarity between oxymoron and paradox. While oxymoron is a combination of two contrary words means a phrase of two words can be a complete oxymoron as we have already seen and paradox is a complete sentence having the contrary ideas which may seem to be true for example truth is honey which is bitter so with this example we reach a conclusion that a paradox is a self contrary statement having some hidden meaning examples william shakespeare says I must be cruel to be kind. It's a paradox. George Orwell says all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. A few more examples include child is the father of man. Nobody goes to that shop anymore. It's too crowded. I closed my eyes so that I can see. Number 6 anaphora. The term anaphora basically comes from Greek, which means to carry up or back. Imagine that you are tired of your friend who's making the same mistakes over and over. So you say, "I'm sick and tired of you letting me down. I'm sick and tired of you making me mad." 
I am sick and tired of you doing such silly things. Through the repetition of I am sick and tired, the phrase has become really emotionally charged. One more example is, the wrong person was selected for the wrong job at the wrong time for the wrong purpose. The another form of this sentence is, everything is wrong, person, job, time and purpose. In order to emphasize something wrong, the writer has repeated the word the wrong. So with this discussion, we reach a conclusion that the deliberate repetition of the first part of a sentence in order to achieve an artistic effect is known as anaphora. A few examples are Every day, every night, in every way, I am getting better. My life is my purpose. My life is my goal. My life is my inspiration. Tell them to be good. Tell them to follow their elders. Tell them to mind their manners. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. You better be nice to my friends. You better leave them alone. And you better go away. Number 7. Repetition It's a very very wide term. There are more than 11 figures of speeches in English language in which only repetition is done. A short summary of them is like this. Pause the video and watch it. All the aforementioned are the examples of repetition. But in a wide perspective, let's try to understand through the following examples of repetition. Number 1. The bird said, I don't sing because I am happy. I am happy because I sing. Number 2. If you think you can do it, you can do it. If we talk about the difference between anaphora and repetition, we can say that anaphora is only a part of repetition. Why anaphora is a different name? Because it's specially known for the repetition of the first part of the sentence, which is usually a phrase. While repetition repeats any word, phrase, clause or any of the sentence, not necessarily the first one. Let's reach a conclusion. Repetition could be any literary device in which a word, phrase or a sentence is repeated two or more times. It's not usually thought as a single figure of speech. Instead, it's more useful to think of repetition as being a category that covers a number of more specific figure of speeches, all of which use repetition in different ways. A few examples are And miles to go before I sleep And miles to go before I sleep Number 2 the boss said, don't come late, don't leave early and don't delay your work. Number 3. I feel happy because I saw the others were happy. Because I knew I should feel happy but I wasn't really happy. Number 8. Alliteration All the examples of tongue twister which I gave you in the beginning of this video are the perfect examples of alliteration. If the vowel sound is being repeated, the figure of speech is as an ends. If the consonant sound is being repeated, it is consonance. So, assonance and consonance both are the parts of alliteration. Let's frame a definition of alliteration. Alliteration is a figure of speech in which the same sound is repeated in a group of words. Here you need to pay special attention that alliteration is the repetition of sounds, not just letters. Alliteration words don't have to be right next to each other. 95% people believe that it is necessary that only the first letter should be repeated to make the alliteration. Examples All the tongue twisters are the perfect examples of alliteration. Number 9. Transferred epithet Epithet means adjective. When an adjective is presented before you in a way that it seems to describe something but it actually refers to something else. Example Drunk driving Driving is a skill, it's not drunk. Basically, the driver is drunk and the adjective of the driver is transferred to the driving. So, it is transferred epithet. Another example is lonely day. Here, basically, the speaker is without any companion throughout the day. So, the speaker is lonely and the adjective lonely is transferred to the day. So, it is transferred epithet. So, with this, we reach a conclusion that Transferred epithet is a figure of speech in which an adjective qualifies a noun other than the person or thing it is actually describing. A few examples are I had a wonderful day. He passed a sleepless night. He breathed a relieved sigh. A hateful eye can dishearten anyone. Number 10. Enjambment Enjambment comes from the French word enjambiment, which means to step over. Let me take you a little earlier. 
In English literature, the era of 1880 is considered as the era of free verse, where poets did not pay much attention to rhyming scheme and the poetry was based on the sounds, words, meters and phrases. So enjambment was a very popular tool of that time and poets used it to switch over lines without any suitable rhyming scheme. Let me start with a few examples. Example 1. We were running to find what had happened beyond the hills. Example 2. The sun hovered above, the horizon suspended between night and day. In both of the above examples, the first and the second lines are enjambment because they are continued after the line breaks, whereas the third line is AND stopped. So we reach a conclusion that enjambment is continuing a line after the line breaks without a terminal punctuation. A few examples of enjambment are, I think I had never seen a verse as beautiful as a flower. The poet labors all his days to build the beauty in his rhymes. Amongst the bushes and thorns, beautiful red rose blooms. Number 11. Onomatopoeia We have five sense organs and poetry touches each one of them. Point of attention is when poetry touches your auditory sense, it is onomatopoeia. These are basically sound words. This figure of speech is basically the figure of sound. Means if you experience anything about sound in poetry, you can say it is onomatopoeia. Examples The buzzing bee flew away. The large dog said bow wow. There are a number of sounds which we usually come across. If we find any of the sound in poetry, no doubt that will be onomatopoeia. So let's frame a definition. Onomatopoeia is the use of meaningful sound effects in poetry to make the description more expressive and interesting. Examples If you are going to cuff, please cover your mouth. My brother can birth the alphabet. The snake slithered and hissed. My favorite singers have recipe voices. Number 12. Allusion Your pen is quite old. It seems to be the pen of Vasco da Gama. It is actually allusion because an external reference of Vasco da Gama is given here without giving much details about him. And the speaker expects the listeners to understand it. Another example is When your parents learn about your new plan to raise money, it's going to sink like the Titanic. Titanic is only a reference without much details, so it is allusion. I think we have gathered enough material to frame a definition now, so let's do it. An allusion is a figure of speech that references a momentous person, place, thing, event or an earlier part of the current work without much details. A few examples are, you don't have to be Albert Einstein to understand poetry. Well, I'm no Hercules, but I could open that bottle for you. Go ahead, ask me anything. I'm like Google over here. Your backyard is a garden of Eden. You might be wondering what is the difference between allusion and simile. Hold on. An allusion is simply a brief mention of a person, place or an event, while simile compares similar qualities between two different things which we have already studied through the example of boy and giraffe and so many others. A key difference between both of them is, describing a character as being honest like Abraham Lincoln is an allusion, as it is used to emphasize the character's honesty by comparing him to a historical figure known for his honesty. Example of simile is, her eyes sparkle like the twinkling stars, it is a simile. It strengthens the point that the character has beautiful eyes by comparing them to the twinkling stars. Number 13. Apostrophe Suppose you are giving a speech and in the meanwhile you speak a poetic line addressing someone or something who is not present. The figure of speech will be apostrophe. Example O oh death, where is thy sting? Here the poet is addressing an abstract noun. In the same way, poets usually address God, government, world and even cell phones like O oh cell phones, why you always ring at an untimely hour? I think we should frame a definition now. Apostrophe is a figure of speech in which speaker directly addresses an abstract idea, absent or non-existent person or thing, as if present and capable of understanding. Examples O oh grave, where is thy victory? O oh pardon me, thou bleeding piece of earth, that I am meek and gentle with those butchers. 
death be not proud though some have called thee mighty and dreadful for thou art not so number 14 imagery the word imagery is associated with mental picture so in literature when poets and writers describe something in a way that the description seems to be a visual image we call it imagery example the night was black as ever but bright stars lit up the sky in a beautiful and varied constellation which was sprinkled across the astronomical landscape in this example the experience of the night is described in depth with color black as ever bright shape varied constellations and pattern sprinkled so it's a perfect example of imagery now let's reach a conclusion with a few examples Imagery is a figure of speech in which the writer creates picture of thought through the words to appeal all five sense organs. Example: The stone fell with a splash in the lake. The concert was so loud that the ears rang for days afterward. The blind man touched the tree to learn if the skin was smooth or rough. Glittering white, the blanket of snow covered everything in sight. Number 15: Inversion. Inversion means reversal of usual order. It's also known as anastrophe. It is a literary technique in which the poets and writers change the normal order of words. It is basically achieved by doing the following. Number 1, placing an adjective after the noun it qualifies. Example, Akbar the Great. Number 2, placing a verb before the subject. Example, shouts the policeman. Number 3, placing a noun before the preposition example worlds between inversion usually happens in the typical exclamatory sentences where objects are placed before their verbs and subjects finally we find a definition inversion is a figure of speech in which the normal order of words is reversed in order to achieve a particular effect or emphasis examples shocked i was tomorrow will come the decision How amazing this is. Powerful you have become. The dark side I sense in you. Patience you must have my young hero. Number 16, Synecdoche. Let's start with an example. The nurse says your son is in good hands. Here you need to understand that the son is literally not being taken care by two hands only. Rather, he is being taken care by an entire hospital system, including nurses, assistants, doctors, and many others. This is an example of synecdoche, where a part signifies a whole. So the conclusion is that synecdoche is a figure of speech which allows a part to stand for a whole or a whole to stand for a part. It uses wheels for the car. It uses plastic for credit cards, or so on. A few examples are. I'm preparing my face to walk in an interview. The hired hands are the base of this building. CBSE announces new pattern of question paper. The western waves were all aflame. These were a few major and most important figure of speeches that cover a large portion of English literature. I'm sure if you watch this video twice, figure of speeches are not going to terrify you anymore. and your journey of wording is going to be more interesting and effective find